All right, Coach, let's start with an interesting decision the other night up to Providence. You did not start Soriano, the captain. He struggled for the last five or six games. It's well documented. There's a lot that goes into a decision like that, symbolically, how the fans will react, how he will react, what went into it, and how did you think he reacted? Well, you know, throughout the season, Ledham may have not started. Um, Dingle didn't start. Everybody but DJ uh, has not started. Mm -hmm. And Joel wasn't given the effort that Zuby was given. And we decided on, based on effort, if, if Joel was playing poorly, but his effort was 100%, he would still be in the starting lineup. Mm -hmm. But his effort wasn't of the standards of everybody else on the basketball team. So I said, look, you're not getting benched because you're going to play. It's not like you're, you know, you're sitting out and we have another first baseman coming in and yeah, yeah. if we need a pinch hitter, we'll bring you in. No, you're going to play. So it's not, it's not a benching at all. It's just that everybody is given extraordinary effort except you. Now, by the way, he's not dogging it at all. Okay. He's just not giving the effort enough for us to win like he did in the beginning of the year. Why the drop-off? How frustrating I think it's that? fatigue a little bit. You know, okay. in Joel's defense, this is not a style of play for him. Running, pressing, changing defenses. You know, that's not him. But if he learns it, now he can play at the highest level. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll defend him a little bit on that. But, you know, guys beating him up and down the floor, running the floor that are just as big as him, that's not going to cut it. So he's not an 18-year-old kid, but he's still a college. He's a young man. He's been here for a little bit, but he's still in college. So how do you compartmentalize as an adult what impact it might have on him emotionally? How do you process I, I that? I met with him. I told him. I said I showed him on the film of why he's not given extraordinary effort. People are beating you up and down the floor. You're out of your stance. You're, and he sees it, and he said, damn, I didn't think that was me. Mm. I said, well, it is you. And then, I, so now he's back in the lineup because he's had a great couple of practices. Yep. Um, you know, he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. Wonderful guy. He's, he, he wants to do well. He wants the team to do well. But the proof is in the pudding of the way you run up and down the court. Okay. Before we move on, what was it like to be up in Providence again? I know they treated you well. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I've, you know, I looked up at one of the banners, and there were two for the Final Fours. Yeah. One was in 73, the other was in 87. In 73, I played against that team. You did? Yes. We How many points you have? Ernie D. Oh, I don't remember. Uh, Ernie Degrigor. Yes. Uh, yeah, Ernie D. Uh, and then the wow. 87 when I coached. So That's cool. So one thing that I noticed watching the team call in games, what do I know? I'm not a coach, but it's visible to me. There's times where I'm like, that's an easy bucket in transition, and you guys don't get it. Are you surprised that you don't finish more in transition, or am I off with that assumption? No, I think you you're – so I've been trying to tell the media this. They say, we open up 4-1. Yeah, we opened up in Conesecca and 4-1 against teams we should beat at home. Uh, Xavier, but we should beat them at home. And perfect, like Seton Hall destroyed Xavier tonight. Yeah, they crushed them. By the way, Seton Hall got destroyed at Xavier. I know. So this is a home court league with mm -hmm. the exception of the Connecticut Marquettes. Look, this is, an, this is a running, pressing style of play that you need great athletes to play. Mm -hmm. We did the best we could in putting the team together but it's not a team comprised of great athletes. Great athletes do exactly what you say. They go down, they dunk the ball, they beat people down the floor. Yep. Next year, I promise you, we will have great athletes yeah. because we have time to find great athletes. We didn't have time to do that. We did the best we could putting the team together. We're not bottom dwellers. No. We're in the middle of the pack, and that's what you would expect. There is, there is no, look, when I went to Providence, and I'm not saying the Final Four, mm -hmm. when I went to Louisville, it's the same at every place. When I, went, when I was first year at Kentucky, I was 500. It yeah. just takes time to put your style to put. You. Now it's tougher today yeah, it is. because you got to change everything, mm -hmm. and you got to hope that the guys stay and they don't get offered more money elsewhere. Okay. We know you play a lot of golf, so you appreciate this analogy. I think. Listen, you jump out to a lead, you shoot a 60, like a, a relative unknown, 65 round one at Augusta. Eh, back nine at Augusta, a little different. Those little three footers, a little tougher, right? Why is it that you guys are good enough to jump out to leads on good teams and can't finish? And you know what's funny? The opposite has always been, even when I've had great teams, we were always trailing at halftime, and we destroy them in the second half. My, my wife always says, everybody collapses in the second half. How, what's with this team? Well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just different. Every team is different. Yep. Uh, it's part of the reasons why we lose those leads. You're on the road, yeah. the crowd's in the game, they're feeling the tense moment, and they make threes. Mm -hmm. they, they go on at Marquette, they went on a three-point barrage, um, and they're a very good basketball team. Good. Marquette and Connecticut 
uh, two of the best teams. Then, then you have uh, right now Seton Hall and, and Creighton are playing at that middle level. And then there's three or four of us playing at the middle level. Um, you mentioned Mullins. You can't say him. You already coached Mark Jackson with the Knicks. You can't say him. And I was thinking about this. I'm like, I want to, you know, obviously talk about the program and the state of it now, and we'll get a few more questions about that before we wrap up. But I said, I got to ask Rick, one player in the history of St. John's that he wishes he would have been able to coach from any era. Anybody jump out? Can't say Mullen or Jackson. Can't say right? Mullen, can't, can't say, say Mark Jackson. Jackson. Oh, there's so many great ones. I would say probably, though, Malik Seeley. Ah, rest He'd, in peace. I yeah, love Malik. He would be one guy. But I go back watching Sonny Dub and Joe Dupree. I know you uh, Those guys. Um, but, you know, I, there's so many great ones, but I would probably say Malik. We need to celebrate a great history of St. John's. Yes. And what people don't realize, obviously most of the people have passed, but, you know, those 60s and 70s were great years, mm -hmm. and we need to celebrate that a little bit. I love that. One thing, and I'm sure you have your eyes on this, you know, the first true star that you, whether it's from this roster or a roster in two years, that gets to the NBA and is, and is a stud, right? There was, a, there, was, there was a long, long window. You know, Felipe made it, then he ripped up his knee. Ron, Ron was obviously terrific. But when I was growing up, we've talked about this, when, when Mark won the Rookie of the Year in 87 with you guys, like, we all wanted to be Mark. We wanted to be Chris, Dream Team, All-Stars. Like, yeah. I almost feel like once you get that first pro that pops, I don't mean a fringe guy, although that a would Donovan be A Donovan Mitchell well. type. Yeah, a stud. Yeah. Then I think the St. John's brand explodes. You think I, that's important? I 100% agree with that. Right now, there are no... I mean, DJ's having an MVP year for us, but he's not a star of stars. Mm -hmm. You know, you know I really think, I really believe this, that Sim, Brady, Zuby, a couple or three, they're going to be stars someday. Mm. And um, uh, RJ's going to be a star someday. Now, you, you raved about him from now, day one. Now, he turns it over too much. Yep, he does. He fouls too much. Mm -hmm. But once he learns the fundamentals, he's a star. He's, go, he's a big time. Now, I've seen big time players. Yep. He's a big time guy. It's just he's turnover prone yep. by throwing one handed passes, by not being. He has to learn the fundamentals of basketball. I don't have to teach him how to run, jump, pass. He, he, he's got those ingredients. He has to learn the fundamentals of basketball. Once he gets those, he's a star in the making. But I think Sim and Brady, you know, with them, it's all about strength. Yes. They don't have the. Sim will lose the ball a lot because he lacks strength. Mm -hmm. Brady gets pushed around a lot and buried going to the rim because he lacks strength. This offseason, strength and conditioning is going to be so important to them. Is there a player comp for, let's stick with Lewis, maybe a, an NBA player last 15, 20 years that you think he's got a similar skill set to, R.J. Lewis? He's unique, uh, really unique. I, I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be a great one. I really believe that. Now, he's got to be more disciplined. He's got to stop. He had, the last game he was great, but he had five turnovers. Yeah, I know. Today in practice, he was awesome. He had six turnovers. Mm. You know, it's all careless plays. Once he, he gets disciplined and once he learns the fundamentals of the game, look out. And I believe the same thing with, with Sim and Brady, it's different. They don't have to learn the fundamentals as much as they've got to get stronger. Understood. Um, Conway, the other night, has he now, I know it's practice to practice. You earn the minutes you get in practice or, or based on what you do in practice. Is he now a piece of the puzzle? He's in a rotation forward? now because, uh, he, he, look, they're all weak defensively because this is not an athletic team. So he may be weak, to, but he moves, he rebounds, he played a great game. Yeah. It did not surprise me he played well because that's what he was doing in practice. And he's strong, too. He's he is strong. strong. He is strength. strong. He's, he's a strong. basketball junkie. He's a yep. good kid. These, kid. these guys really care. It's bothering them now losing, and there's no question about it. But they're going to fight to the end, and um, if, if we don't, get it in regular season, we got to win the Big East tournament. And that's the way you got to look at these things. Uh, you also dropped the doozy the other, I guess you guys aren't going to lose the rest of the season. You dropped that the well, that's straight. A, that's that's our going? goal, isn't it? I mean, it's not like I'm, I'm the Knicks right now saying we're going to win the next 40 games. Yeah. You know, without Randall, without Yeah, OG, I mean, without, it, this you know. is our goal is to win. Now, if you ask Seton Hall, their goal is to win out as well. Mm -hmm. If you ask Villanova right now, that's their goal to win out. So we got to, we, we think we're playing good basketball. Um, we're not playing great basketball because we don't have great players. Yep. And, you know, that, that's going, we, there can be a great night for us, but we don't have great players. We have one guy that plays at a high level, and that's uh, Danis Jenkins. Jenkins. He's terrific. Yeah, and the rest of the guys don't play at a high, now they can have a great night, yeah. but they're not capable of always playing at a high level like him. Final thing, 20 seconds. Do you rewind that Seton Hall tape where you guys, and you, you were sick and, you know, you guys got punished. Do you show it to them again, or how does that, they're how do you motivate They're gonna them watch again? it in 10 minutes. Really? 
Do you know with four minutes to go in the game, uh, first half, it was tied? Yeah. They went on something like a 30 to four run from the end of the four minutes to the beginning of the second I half. I remember well. I've never seen a run yeah. like that in, the, in, in all the games. I've never seen that in my life. Yep, and, and, and our guys surrendered. Mm. That's the, you know, you surrender. At the, when you see runs like that, I remember playing Syracuse in the Big East Championship, one of Jim Boeheim's last uh, Big East Championships before they moved on at, to the ACC. Um, they were up 16 at halftime. They went up 18 in the second half, Big East Championship. We mm. went in something like a 40 to three run. I remember that. And we wound up winning by 18 points in regulation. So some nights, uh, you could say that last night Xavier surrendered in a game. Okay. And, and the great teams, don't sur Probably you could say Connecticut surrendered at Seton Hall. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always that one night where somebody surrenders and you say, we can't let, ever let that happen again. I love it. Rick, great chat as always, man. Thank this you. has been awesome. This is Rick Pitino, of course, head coach of St. John's. He'll get him right. You know he will. Quick timeout. Back with more of the Red Storm Report next.